My guest today started off working in a clinical psych ward. Now, after more than 25 years applying his expertise helping people have transformations in other contexts, including corporate consulting, he is the author of Intention, Building Capabilities to Transform Your Story, which integrates research and personal journey. I'm talking with Dr. Ian Brooks. I'm Aidan Nepom, and this is The Changed Podcast. have you here, Ian. Should I call you doctor? Should I call you Mr. Brooks? Should I call you Ian? Ian. Thanks for being here. I have so many questions based on just your history. You have such an interesting history. Um, So you worked in a clinical psych ward? Like, are you talking about, uh, like, inside our our prison system? Well, actually, um, some people did come from our prisons. Other people were brought in by their uh, by their families to act in in a lockdown ward. So it was a a four, it was supposed to be a 14-day um, lockdown facility where the only way to get in and out outside of handcuffs or being brought in by your family um, was through with a key. And so in that context, people were brought in straight off the street. Um, so typically dealing with those who are mentally um, uh, disabled or obviously have a mental imbalance of which they needed to be brought in and brought down from their highs, recalibrated, doing therapy, as well as readjusting their medicine. So a very, uh, very interesting experience uh, across the board to really work with that population from a psychology perspective, um, both from a coaching as well as um, just a day to day. How can we just be better and getting in back reintegrated? Wow. Back. How long did you do that? I did that for two years. Um, so I worked with um, an adult uh, population. So having the adults come in and doing that for two years. So I had an opportunity to not only do their intake, but also work with them from a context of their group coaching and individual um, one-on-one therapy, and even working with their families as we try to reintegrate them back into society. So um, definitely an interesting experience and one that uh, I don't, um, I won't ever forget, but hope I never go back to. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. You're done with that one. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm super curious as a, so, you know, my dad's a doctor and uh, one of the things that um we talk, we've talked about often is as consultants and his experience as a practitioner is the challenge in getting your patients, or in my case, my clients to move forward, to take action on recommendations, right? So you're like, this is what needs to happen next. Here's your homework. Was that more or less difficult for you in that context? Like what I'm, I'm super curious in a lockdown ward, is there more buy-in because people have to, to get out? Or <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 was a lot more buy-in within the context of that lockdown facility because they weren't getting out anyway because they had to pass through myself or other individuals who were looking over my work as well as the the actual um, psychiatrist who was actually prescribing medicine and so forth. Um, so that way they had to pass certain tests and both from a conversation standpoint or other how were they integrating with other patients, et cetera, to before they were actually discharged. So that buy-in, they could get buy-in within that within the confines of of that of those fourteen days, potentially even longer, staying in that facility. But as we extended that beyond to their actual environments, that buy-in was a lot harder in Wayne, um, and that really mm-hmm. really speaks to that transitional point that I think we all experience from a change perspective. That if we within the ward context, you had fourteen days within your lock-in, you're doing intentional focus across that entire time, and every day is scripted and dictated. But when we get back out into our environments, our whole structure is very fluid. It's what we've put up to keep ourselves safe. So if you think about our people, places, and things that really establish mm-hmm. the foundation of who we are, that all goes out the window. So while it was fun to your question or easy or easier within the confines of those 14 days and in that war, they got a lot more <laughs> difficult as they went back and integrated to society. What a trip. What a trip. I mean, how do you define, so, I mean, you talked a little bit about how that relates to change because that is you're changing behavior, changing habits. So change is a hundred percent involved. Um, wh- how do you define change? What's your in working definition? Sure. My, de- my working definition is really, really separating out change from transformation. So change is I can get someone to do something mm. one day at a particular moment in time. 
and taking very targeted steps to do something different. That's a lot different than transformation, which I think a lot of people are really uh, reaching for. And that is building it into your fabric of who you are, more so in an integration perspective. So it's now part of my people, places, and things. It's part of my routines. It's part of how I think versus what's interjected into me. No different than what people are in, in award perspective, which that speaks to a moment in time that I'm fine right here, right now. And there's a, as a, there's a compliment in marriage between change in those multiple steps and moments that integrate into transformations mm -hmm. over time. And so that's really where I see change and then extending that to transformation for me as we all are looking for that transformative effort, but we tend to get stuck on those changes in the moment. Right. That, uh, that's interesting. That's a, I think that's a really cool distinction to make. Like, In order to achieve transformation, you've got to make changes, but you don't have to tr be transformed in order to change something. Um, it's the chicken and egg yeah. is pretty clear here. One of them is definitely first. Yeah, I think I think so. <laughs> it's kind of um, a ridiculous analogy I tried to make. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's true with the chicken and egg. But I think when we think about change, it's it's in that moment. It's like, what can I do right now? Because when we think about it and 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 write about it and hear, it's like I got a pain, or I want to do this one thing. And if I can do this one thing, everything goes to solve. So I just changed. Now I don't have to worry about it. I'm done. That's a lot different narrative than saying I truly transformed, and now it's going from that chicken and egg, I'm no longer an egg. I am now a chicken. <laughs> and you're not going back to being an egg. That's just not happening unless, you know, you know right. that's, that is. So there's that it's a great analogy in that because that is transformative. I wonder, a lot of people talk about being afraid of change. I wonder if what they're really saying is they're afraid of transformation. I, I, I really think so. I think it's a, 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 I've never heard it put in that context, but I think it's something that needs to be explored more because I do think it's about that transformation. And more specifically, when I think about that fear is now I have to do this every single day. Now I have to constantly do this because now it's that vulner, vulnerable place that I'm in. Now is it just doing it one time. Now I have to do it all the time. And we get tired, right? We want to be like, I'm done. Like, let's be clear. I, I did this good. <laughs> I'm right back to where I, where I was, right? And I'm good. Yeah, That's yeah. Okay, so when we're really talking about our behaviors, we're talking about we're doing something different consistently. That And that both means success, failure, mm -hmm. learning, adjusting, and then consistently moving forward. And then that's, but I think that mm -hmm. to what you described, that fear of, I've got to do this all the time. Now it's expectation that I now have to do this. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it it makes me think of, um, you know, any of the really like well known books on changing habits talk about like the your belief and your ability to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And and I'm always reminded of uh, a good friend of mine who quit smoking the easiest way in the whole wide world, which is she just changed how she identified. <laughs> Which is also yeah. simultaneously like the hardest way in the whole wide world. She was like, I'll just transform. And then the change just is inherent. Um, you know, she was like, right. instead of saying, I'm trying to quit more smoking or I'm not smoking anymore or I'm not smoking right now. She just said, I'm not a smoker. I don't smoke. Uh, yeah. Even though yesterday wow. she was a smoker. But today she, I'm not a smoker. <laughs> And she hasn't picked up a cigarette since. And you know what? She doesn't even miss it. It's like, because she's not a smoker. A smoker would probably miss smoking, but she's not a smoker. She has other things to think about. Right. And that's, and that's the power of the mind sometimes too. It's like, oh, I'm no longer going to do this. Um, I'm, no, I'm not a smoker. So that's what's going to happen. I know. I remember as a kid, very distinctly saying to myself, I'm not going to cry ever again. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was thinking about that more recently around the power of the mind. And in that moment, thinking, however, I got to that solution, whatever that solution was, it wasn't about how I was crying or the reason I was crying. It was like, I'm no longer crying because that was the outcome. Oh, I have so many questions about yeah. that, but I'm not a psychologist. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll delve into it. I, I remember because my parents were fighting and I forgot what they were fighting about, but I remember just crying. I was like, I'm, and, and, and obviously when you cry, it can be very exhausting. And I just remember I'm tired of being yeah. exhausted. I'm just tired of being exhausted. And I said, you know what? I'm not crying anymore. I'm tired. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And if this is what crying gets me, I'm not going to do it. It is not, it's not worth it. There's no winning in this. And huh. as a child and as a kid thinking like that came with that same level of thought, 
guess what? I haven't cried. I can probably count on one hand, maybe minus fingers, how many times I've cried since. And, it, and it's a very indicative idea is what you just described as quitting smoking. It's like the power of the mind. Now, mind you, mm -hmm. your friend is an adult. And while and I'm describing myself as a child making that decision, that has carried over into the adult. Sure. Um, and it's a very, but the power of the mind is very interesting. And as we think about fear and the reasons why we don't do certain things, or even potentially the reasons we do, um, it's a very interesting context, as, as in specifically this idea of change, um, because we do things quite a bit out of fear, not necessarily providing the context around how do we actually move forward. I'm curious um, what your personal relationship is. So you help a lot of people, but also you're a people too. So what is your relationship with change? Do you get excited about changing things up? I have, how many times have you transformed? Are you, are you transforming again? Like what's, what's your relationship to the content on a personal level? <laughs> On a personal level, I do it all the time. Um, now, others might have a disagreement with that, but you know, it's always in the eyes of the bumper. <laughs> but personally, I do it quite a bit. <laughs> um, and actually, in my book, Intent, I to talk about my own growth and evolution as I experienced it, even just writing it, of the person mm. of who I thought I was and the person of whom I am evolving to become. And let me give you an example. When I was actually, you know, this book has been written, this is the second um, version of this book, um, but the first one that's actually seeing the light of day. Um, the first version was an audio book and I was like, okay, let me go and, and do the audio book recording. Now, mind you, I'd never uh, written a book before, um, had never done an audio book before. Yeah. Quite frankly, I'd never actually even put the book, um, the only people who had actually read the book were my editor and a friend of mine. So... I was really saying it for the first time out loud for anybody <laughs> else. And so um, I, and as a, as a person who isn't much in the social media and so forth, but getting there, um, and one of my growth opportunities was to actually extend myself. And one reason why I wanted to do the audiobook to really push myself in, in that real time. And, and boy, did I. Um, it was a two-day recording, but that first day was so draining. Just to read words, just to hear myself. Just to, uh, uh, and then it's like, did I say what I think I said? And then I'm judging myself, right? Because that's, that's a natural inclination when you're yeah. going through change. Now yeah. it's you know, expectations. Like, oh, oh, and judging is so exhausting. If you want to feel tired, just spend some time in self-judgment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I tell you, I got to that first day and, 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 bless, and bless the producers and the, and the team that was helping me because they really coached me through that first day. And after that first day, I, I just sat on the beach and I just sat there. And I actually, I went to a bar that was on the beach and I just sat there with a the drink like, man, I'm, I'm tired. And the next day, uh, you know, I, I got re-energized and did it again with the, the remaining portions of, of the, of the uh, script. And it went a lot better. From that experience and then subsequently listening to myself, um, actually, from an auditing standpoint, listening to it from the tone, listening to it from the content, listening to it as though I'm judging it, no different than I would judge anything else, be it um, from the lens of a consultant and of care. I was doing the same thing to mm -hmm. myself as though it was a third person. And I was like, oh, I can't send it. I can't publish this. There's no way in the world I'm, I would ever give this to anybody. I hope no one ever hears it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what that experience from that recording did um, as, as, and it was draining I, to do, it took me a while to listen to all the portions of that audiobook. What it afforded me to do is do two things. It allowed me to sit down and say, what's my priority? Is this something I really want to do? It's either yes or no. It's not maybe. You don't just step into this. If that answer is yes. Then we need to go, we need to do something different. Now, what's going to be that different? So I scrapped the entire mm -hmm. book. That experience made, allowed me to become the author the book needed in a way to, to be truly transparent, to be still be authentic to myself and owning my voice in a way that now intention, I believe, has gotten there through the stories and even just my acknowledgement of that transformative process. So as the saying goes, I'm, I'm not only a spokesperson and the author in this case, I'm also a client um, because I've... I've <laughs> Um, I look at this book and 
and I, I smile because I know what it took to get there and in that process and even just the self exploration that it has continues to afford me in a way that I could never, never have experienced or even anticipated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all pretty exciting and cool. I, I mean, yeah, really, there, in listening to you describe the process of wanting to write a book, going for a project, scrapping the project, writing this current book, um, it makes me think very much of, um, I often think about uh, when we change ourselves, the, the discomfort involved in really having that transformation. So I think about like, I, I have this picture, I'll just draw it with my hands for you. But it's like, <laughs> and maybe I'll, you know, if, my listeners are familiar with this already. But um, it's like, down here is comfort town. This is where we live. This is everything that's comfortable. Now, it doesn't necessarily serve us. These can be all kinds of um, behaviors, expectations, self-judgment, all that stuff that's really familiar. It's like nasty, smelly sweatpants, but we hang out there. And right. we see up there, we're like, the peak of discovery lies ahead. That's where all the cool stuff mm -hmm. is. That's where like the ideal me probably hangs out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna head out mm -hmm. of comfort town. I'm gonna head up the hill. But we get into this uncomfortable territory, which is actually bigger than you expect. Yeah. And a lot of people head into that uncomfortable territory and they're like, no, no, I didn't bring enough snacks. And they turn back. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and then yeah. they live in comfort town for a, a while longer. So I just was imagining this moment of like, ah, that discomfort, this isn't going the way I wanted to go. And you had a choice. You were like, mm -hmm. I could just scrap this and really just scrap it. Or I can regroup, take stock of my supplies, yeah. put my back, my back on and keep hiking. And so, you know, I think, I think that's really a kind of a cool journey and it's inspiring to me because I, you know, I haven't put a book out there. So on a selfish note, I'm like, but I, I could climb that mountain. I, I could yeah. do it. And I'm sure you could. And, 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 and the reality to what you just described is it's, we know we're going to face challenges and we cognitively know what's going to happen. Like, okay, we know we're going to face right. it. And I, I got this. Right. But when you're in the moment you're like, Oh, wow. Um, uh, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot action wise, but also what we touched on is that emotional side. Cause we often judge based off of what we see with our mm. eyes, not with, what, what, what's in our hands. And so we mm -hmm. offer judgment based on that object. And it's hard to offer judgment on how we feel. And that going back to our previous conversation on fear, that's what captures us. It's like, it's like the wildly coyote effect. It's like you try one thing, one time it fails. Oh, I'm not doing that again because I'm scared now. It's right. I was checking and adjusting. Like, mm -hmm, I'm good. That I tried it. It didn't work. Uh, I can say I, I say I got the T-shirt. Mm -hmm. We'll move on from here. <laughs> but uh, it is that. I had that conversation recently with um, my stepdaughter. She's now eight and a half, and uh, she asked me to do her her second grade PE class with her here at home. Um, they, she's every other day in person. And I was like, yes, anything physical sounds awesome. So we come together to do this thing. And the PE teacher as the warm up experience has us doing this really silly dance. That's like kicking your feet and then walking in a circle. It's not complicated, okay. but she doesn't, take to it right away and she just like sits down crosses her arms and she's mm -hmm. like it's hard and I don't know how to do it right mm -hmm. <laughs> and I heard myself go <laughs> knee palms don't quit just because it's a challenge <laughs> which was a made-up <laughs> sentence because, <laughs> because <laughs> but in the moment, it was like, I don't know what else to do right now. I don't want her to quit just because something feels hard. Because anytime I've quit when something felt hard, it's it's never, you know, I well, I don't quit for long I because I, I just want to keep going. The one time I quit doing something because it was hard was skiing. And um, mm. honestly, I'm okay with that. The older I've gotten, the colder I've gotten. So I, I can have other hobbies. But this is like, we hadn't even started into PE class. And I was like, you can't just. Right. You can't just give right, up on yourself right. like that, you eight and a half year old. I don't, right. My expectations might be too high. 
<laughs> only five minutes into class. No. <laughs> I mean, you want to slow it down? We can slow it down. You want to you want to pause the video and practice together? We can do those are things we can do. But we don't just cross our arms and wish for life to be easy, child, because it isn't. Right. You, the good yeah. things are worth working for, and so are the sometimes so are the mediocre things, like a PE class from school. Absolutely, and the things that you're challenged. And, and you just challenge yourself from a context of, in, in this case, I think it's a great example. It's probably the right place where you need to be. I don't know how to do it. This mm -hmm. is a challenge. Well, those things are probably maybe true. It uh, was true, I guess, in this case. But there's an and to that. There's I an don't and. think. <laughs> there's an and that, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to get this right. Or I don't need to be perfect. But I just need to, we're going to make these steps. But I think it's a microcosm of what we all Baby experience. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge. I think so, too. Kids are great at reflecting to us what do we do in our grown-up lives in a very, like, <laughs> acute way. It's like, and also a cute way. But um, yeah. <laughs> and I digress. Yes. Well, I've invited you here to share a story. That's the real reason you're here, to tell me a story from a time in your life after which things changed Um in some way for you, whether that's your view of the world or changed how you identify with something or changed your direction or whatever. Um, before you tell your story, I'm curious, was it hard to pick one? It was actually, mm -hmm. um, because I, our stories evolve where we are in place and time. So there's places that, you know, when I was a child and as we were just describing earlier, yeah. Um, when I was thinking as a kid and how that changed my direction versus when I was a young adult versus an older adult now, yeah. um, what that means and does um, and the perspective that I and context that I'm able to provide, is, it was it was it was it was challenging. Well, I'm excited to hear your story. So I will ask you now, Dr. Ian Brooks, will you tell us a story from a moment in your life after which things changed? Sure. I, you know, the one that I'm going to stand really stand on is a moment in time in my midlife um, when I was actually riding a motorcycle and I was, I was hit by a car. And in context, uh, when you're riding a motorcycle, at least always I had in my mind that it's not a matter of when, it's just a matter, not, it's a matter of when, not if, but when you actually got in an accident. And so always mentally, I knew that at some point I would get in an accident um, by my own hands or someone else's. But when I got hit in, in this case, I was T-boned by a car. So literally an entire car coming into the side of me. Um, I immediately, after I got hit in and all things transpired, I was riding in the ambulance. Um, I recognized that I have an opportunity here to, to really take hold of stock in my own life, right? <laughs> no, no better place than that being in an ambulance um, and not knowing what's gonna happen. And, and while I felt good, I, you know, and mentally, obviously body-wise was a little, little banged up to say the least, but it also provided me opportunities like at that moment, riding in the, in the, in the ambulance, and I don't know how long it took us to get to the hospital and get to the ER, but I knew riding it, I thought to myself, I'm getting on this motorcycle again. Paint me a picture of that day. Where were you headed? Sure. So actually I was leaving, and, and I'll never forget it, it was that actually Obama's second. Um, 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 it was November 7th. I think it was November 7th uh, when it was the, when Obama was going to be elected president again, and that was balloting day. And I was leaving work around four o'clock and I was, I was driving home and I only lived a mile away from where I work. And I was driving in downtown Los Angeles and there was a lot of traffic as you might imagine, because people are going to different polling places, um, aside from just the regular traffic of individuals going home, um, in general. And I was driving in my lane and in California, you can split lanes, but I was driving in my, in my lane. And again, downtown, you can't go, but so fast anyway. Um, but it, as I was crossing an intersection, a car um, thought they had the light and just turned into me and took me out. Um, and I immediately hopped up from that motorcycle um, and on the other side and just started running. I, I was like, just just move. I, I don't, you know, whether I was running, walking, it didn't really matter. Um, but just move, just to get away from the car, just so I didn't get run over, and et cetera. And 
I sat down on the curb and, you know, I was obviously Good Samaritan stopped and they couldn't go anywhere anyway from a traffic standpoint because the motorcycle was totaled and here I was on the side. And I, and I thought it was fine, right? Because I was like, oh, if I get in an accident, you know, my family and friends don't want me to ride again anyway. They think it's dangerous. You're going to kill yourself. And here, here's an example. Um, and so I, I was, remember sitting on there. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just let me breathe and, and so forth. And then, you know, obviously that's what we tell ourselves, right? Again, getting into this mental and just that physical side, right? And I started just, you know, just feeling good. All of a sudden my body just went in the shock. And it just started good into wow. that an a, a live atrophy because I just couldn't stop and 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 I was like oh I'm just fine I just need you know water breath and clearly that was not the case um, in in that respect but that was the experience and and I will never forget it I'll never forget the intersection I'll never forget that what that felt like and again um, if I can't remember it mentally I do have you know the scarring and the and the reminders um, still to this day that that afford me an opportunity to say, you have come from this. Mm -hmm. You can come through something else. Mm -hmm. And both physically and mentally. And as we think about change, um, never losing sight of that it can be hard and it will be hard. In some ways it should be hard, but uh, something that I won't, uh, yeah, won't see it before. Did you get back on a motorcycle? Who's listening? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have uh, I have been on a motorcycle since. Yes, I yes I have been on. I <laughs> uh, don't want to get in trouble with too many people, but yes, I I have been you back. Tell a... your, I'm telling your mommy on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the worst when they see you in that state and you're like, oh, I'm getting back on. It's because uh, there is fear, right? And and obviously, again, it's yeah. about change. We're managing the expectations of other people as well, right? While this is an individual journey and the journey mm. I needed to go on, I'm also, and we're all conscious of the journeys other people are experiencing around us because they care about us. They, they have their own comfort zones and where we put Yeah, of course. Right. So, uh, you know, so uh, well, you are a braver man than I am. I am not a brave man. I have not gotten back on the motorcycle. I was in a motorcycle accident when I lived in South Korea. Oh, and really? Yeah, and I I remember it so vividly. And also with a theater background, I was rather dramatic. I mean, I dragged oh. myself to the side of the road, dragged, and I was like, please call for help. I mean, I really milked the moment. Uh, and I remember that ambulance ride as well, very vividly, um, mostly because I couldn't stop laughing because apparently when I am in distress, that's what happens. Um, wow. And the, the yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> and I, I got off pretty easy. I was not terribly injured, but the, I never got on a motorcycle again and I never will. I'm committed to not I, doing it. I can, I can appreciate that. And, um, I, and, and when you're laughing about dragging yourself to the side. I mean, quite frankly, what might have been dramatic, quite frankly, I'm sure that was part of the case too. Like, Oh, I mean, the Hey, let me just get to the side. Let me just reconcile this for a second am i good like let me check to make sure i got my body parts or some skin left yeah. whatever that is whatever happened uh but you know from you know and as we talked about change and 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 in the versus transformation for me yeah. it's less about the motorcycle and more about the capability um transforming just that idea of getting on the motorcycle in and of itself is that change and is a goal but it wasn't, it is not the goal. It is, I can do more than what I'm defined by in this motorcycle or injury or otherwise. And, um, but I can appreciate there's also a level of been there, done that, got the lesson learned. Thank you. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting because my, yeah, my experience definitely, um, it's the first time I can remember realizing in, in, in real life, in real time, that life is not permanent. Like you always think that, but that was the moment in my life where I had the big epiphany. Uh, and then, you know, that was added to later as I lost loved ones or family members or whatever, as you know, as you get older and you do. Um, right. So for me, that was yeah. my first brush with mortality and it stuck. I'm curious, yeah. you know, you, you had that really, you had the wherewithal to just like dig in your heels in the mentally in that moment to be like, this does not define me, but yeah. I am sorry. I added a little more like, I, <laughs> <theater> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, but you know, but you had that kind of like, this is not going to be the thing that defines my relationship with myself or with riding a motorcycle. That's pretty intense, but I am, I am wondering if there were intangible changes that only in reflecting back, you can really see in yourself things that like, you're like, I I do that differently. Or I look at things differently because of that. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I, and to your very statement, I look at life differently as well. Um, Mm -hmm. sitting in the emergency room, um, and hearing, you know, the, the screams of just the cowling that, that I wish no one to actually hear Mm -hmm. in any regard, let alone experience. Um, but as you described, it is a, it is a function of, wow, I, I'm here. Now I don't know what here really means at the moment, but I, I'm, I know I'm yeah. here. I'm not cowling, and it's in it, and, and that's that. What it afforded me to do, just even subtly, is to say to myself, in that perseverance that I'm going to do this. It was all in the laying in that hospital, even just for those 13 hours of, you know, that long night really afforded me a chance yeah. to say, you've got, what are you going to do today? Every day is an opportunity. Every moment mm-hmm. is an opportunity because we're not promised a day. We're promised a moment. What can you do? And I talk a little bit about this in the book as well, mm-hmm. because I think it, it, it really spoke, speaks to is the, the, the principle of 24. Um, we're only have 24 hours in this day. We were only promised the next second. That's it. And I can't tell you what I'm going to do with that next second, but I can tell you that it's going to be done with purpose. I don't want to waste time. And it's just those those subtleties in perspective of that I reinforce with myself every day that Mm -hmm. was really underscored in that moment. And Mm -hmm. I can truly sense that even why my book is called intention in a number of ways is for that purpose and we think about long term and that's not promised as you just described the day isn't promised Mm -hmm. yeah only this moment and uh if i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go out laughing as you did you know it may not be fun but i'm gonna laugh about it (laughs) uh i'm gonna go out you know I'm going to do this on my terms and that can somewhat seem selfish yeah. in some ways. Um, it, but it's the terms of choice and that when I say it, it sounds selfish, but the reality is that could be with spending time with you, Aiden, right now having this conversation. That's, that's a choice right there. This moment with our family, with our children, with our friends, it, those are moments. Um, mm-hmm. And we need to maximize that. And that, really does underscore um, some of the change I saw, saw even more so in myself. Do you ever catch yourself in a moment where you are not in that moment doing something like purposeful, like, um, like getting a glass of another second glass of beer or whatever, or like getting a, I'm trying to think of a, a great example. You're like, um, you know, sleepwalking to go get your shower or whatever. And you're, and do you ever just like catch yourself and be like sleepwalk to the shower with purpose? Like, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, do you ever catch yourself when you're not doing like in doing something mundane and you're like, do, do the mundane thing in purpose. <laughs> like, yeah. live your it's purpose like, in this sometimes moment. Sometimes I think to myself like, why are you doing it? Yeah, it's like, this moment yeah. is like, Okay, some things aren't done with purpose. Like tying your shoe, I, I ain't done with purpose. Just tie your okay. shoe and just move on with our lives. Right. <laughs> um, just clean. That's, exactly, that's right? exactly what I mean. Is like, do you ever catch yourself? You're like, but you could probably inject a little purpose into this shoe tying moment. You know. <laughs> yeah. actually, actually, you know what? I I I I don't do that. But what I do say is like consolidate your movements, man. Like you just walk back here like five times to get. Five different things. Won't you just get all five right now? You just sat here and wasted your time. You do realize <laughs> that. I, I do that myself all the time. I, you, you realize you could have saved yourself all this headache by just doing this. Right. And I, that's when I think to myself, like, yeah, I, yeah, I just, I just, those are tasks of futility. I know. And I'm going to, I'm going to take that loss. 
That's time I'm not giving back, and I'm not saying I'm sorry about it neither. And that's like a literally conversation, like to make myself laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, yes, yeah. your statement of like that's yeah, not purposeful, but it's yeah, you do realize that it, you can't do it all the time, and you can't manage your life that way. Sometimes it's hey, let's just hop on a plane, right. let's buy a ticket someplace, and let's go. Like, but I got bills. I got this. like okay, let's let's go. <laughs> like this, <laughs> but as we go, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I was- I was talking with somebody yesterday about, uh, I grew up in this, I don't, I don't know. I came out of a class of students from a high school in a small town that have gone on, like a lot of the folks in the class, not all of us, but a lot of us have gone on to do really interesting um, and sometimes really impactful things. And it's like a whole group of people left that school feeling like you got to make the most of the life you're given. And it's a really Mm -hmm. cool thing to have that experience but there's also this thing where like not everybody has that not everybody was trained to think about life in that way a lot of people and i think sometimes listeners of this show even are listening to the show and they're like yeah 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 you make it sound so easy but you know what's really easy is i'm gonna just watch another show on netflix how about i do that with some purpose you blow hard you know like i wonder you know like we do i think I think uh-huh. when you get into the business of of change and you get into the business of consulting and coaching, I think mm-hmm. I think it is really important to acknowledge it's not mm-hmm. as easy as we make it sound. There's work involved. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and I think that's, you know, I think it's an outstanding point. And, and as we use the word purpose and that, even though I said the principle of 24 in the moments, right? Yeah. Distinguishing out and separating out what that really means. It's if you want to kick your feet up and eat a whole bag of potato chips and, and watch Netflix all day, you're doing with that purpose, whether you realize it or not. Congratulations. Right. <laughs> now, if your purpose is really to go out there and exercise, well, then that's, you know, that's a, that's a different conversation, but you're still doing what you're doing with purpose and because you are doing it intentionally. Right. And, that, and that's okay. You, it isn't always necessarily an outcome based. Hey, I've accomplished. I, you know, I, I hiked this mountain or I did this or that. Well, you have a story to tell. Sometimes that purpose is, I just need to be lost in my thoughts. What did you do today? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't do a single thing. Mm-hmm. And I did it intentionally. And I'm okay with that. I think that's critical. I think it's super important, actually. I think if... um I think to live a purpose-driven life in which you are trying to get the most out of every moment, some of those moments you need to get rest and some of those Mm -hmm. moments you need to get spaced out. Some of those Mm -hmm. moments you need to get forgetful and it's, it's all part of the equation. It's like life is, is a balance of experiences, you know? Yeah, it, it, it really is. And, and, and I, and I think people, again, just get lost in um, go, 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 go. It's like, no, we're, we're, yeah, no, I'm, stop. <laughs> I just need you to just, <laughs> that is, just do the opposite. I, I just, yeah, just stop. Um, that's purpose. And, and, and at, as you mentioned, that offers balance that we don't necessarily afford ourselves because we're in that constant comparison of like, oh my God, as you'd even describe your high school, like people have done some really cool things. So in, in, in maybe some people's mind, well, I'm not going to put myself out there because they've done this really cool stuff. And I just did right. this. Like, well, that doesn't make you less than it's just you have a different story and that that's okay um you don't need to keep keep doing but it isn't always a hierarchy of you did this and they did this now it's constant comparison um and that's where we sometimes get caught up yeah. um unfortunately yeah well i really enjoy talking with you i'm, I'm seeing what time it is i'm curious um what are your final thoughts here? What would you like to leave people thinking about as a result of having heard this conversation? Sure. I, you know, if there's, there's two takeaways that, that I'd say after our conversation, I think as we describe, uh, or several takeaways, not just two, but the first is um, change is hard, right? I don't, I, think, I don't think your listeners are surprised by that, but this is just another story and acknowledgement that as we go about our journeys, each of our journeys is different and acknowledging that we are, not only the writer or the director or the actors, and we can control mm-hmm. our sets and not being afraid of what that really entails, which leads to the second point of fear. It looks good on a piece of paper, right? We all live parallel lives on paper, but when you put in that work that what you're feeling versus what you're seeing, 
that's when that some of that challenge comes and when that fear starts to come out person you know have have the context of that knowing that it's going to come knowing that it's going to be there and now how are you going to mitigate that um and it's okay to say i'm not going to do this but acknowledging that still puts it puts you in a position of power versus being held captive by the fear and then finally enjoy the journey um, continuously look for opportunities to just lay up, watch Netflix and eat ice cream and eat potato chips as much as you do laying up and enjoying yourself and doing, taking activities. But acknowledge that it's your choice, but always do it with intention and you can never be wrong. Thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it. No, thank you, Aiden. It's been a wonderful conversation and um, look forward to uh, chatting with you more. Okay, so I am really interested in this idea, this distinction that Dr. Ian Brooks has made between transformation and change. Since the whole idea behind this show is to explore the meaning of change, I will confess to you that personally, I have been including transformation among the many definitions for change that I have. But now I am thinking about what happens when you parse these two out? Suddenly, transformation is this category where it feels hard and change maybe is a category where it's less hard or easy. I don't know. I will be thinking about this more and I encourage you to do the same. I want to hear from you. Have thoughts, feelings, sarcastic remarks, or a story to share based on listening to this episode? Help me keep the conversation going. Join the Facebook group www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash change hub. Make sure to pick up your copy of Intention, should you choose to buy one, uh, from your local bookseller. And of course, please help us spread the word about this podcast. I want to thank you for listening to and supporting the Changed podcast. Special thanks go to my family for their love, support, and patience. To all of the amazing Changed podcast Patreon page members who I couldn't do this without. Art of Change Skills for Life, and Patreon member producer, Dr. Rick Kirshner. I'm Aiden Nepom, and I wish you the kind of experiences in life you're excited to tell stories about.